So, spark plug gap. How much do you know? You probably know on turbocharged cars, you need to run a smaller gap. But if you have higher output ignition system or higher output coils like these Granatelli coils, can you run a larger gap even with the higher cylinder pressures of a turbocharged engine and therefore make more power? So that's what I set off to do in this video. And well, we'll get into it. So first and foremost, I normally run the standard 28 thousandths gap on the plugs on Buster. I've been pretty much at that for the whole time of me having the car and haven't seemed to have any trouble. But since I installed these Granatelli coils, I've been wondering if I can get away with a larger spark plug gap and not get spark blowout. Because, you know, larger the gap, theoretically, it will help with combustion and have a more complete combustion and more power. With all of that said, and how the car currently is with NKG ruthenium plugs, gapped at 28 thousandths, and the engine tuned to a max boost of 26 PSI currently, I took the draggy and I went out and did a run 40 to 80 to see where we stand. And I was actually really happy with the results because not only did I get a personal best 40 to 80 with Buster, but it gave us a really strong baseline that turns out was going to be very hard to beat. So with 28 thousandths on the plug and how everything currently is, Buster went 40 to 80 mile per hour in 4.08 seconds. That's a 91 degree heat covering a total distance of 369.76 feet. So it was moving pretty good. Then I decided to come back. I let the car cool down. I put a fan on it. I put a hose on the radiator and, and a cooler to keep things cool and consistent between my runs. While I let the car cool down, I went in here, I took all the spark plugs out, I re-gapped them this time to a very large gap of 32 thousandths. Now in the manual of this car, the highest recommended gap is 31 thousandths. So I'm like, well, I'll go up to 32. And well, that's where this video went downhill. Maybe 31, 32 thousandths would be perfectly fine on this car at stock boost levels, which were 22 peak. Now we're at 26 peak, and that proved to be way too much for a 32 thousandths plug gap because as soon as I went into throttle, soon as boost came in, started misfiring because it was blowing up the spark. So that pretty much wasted all of the intentions of this video on seeing if I could open up the gap that far. Now maybe I can open it up to 30 thousandths and it would be fine at this boost level, but I don't see myself gaining really anything at doing that over 28 thousandths. So I decided to not even bother, which is a bummer because I really thought these Granatelli coils were going to be able to put out enough spark to be able to, you know, get away with uh, that high of a gap, even at 26 PSI. Some cars could be able to handle this, but this particular engine, this particular setup, that was the limit for everything. And it's a bit disappointing. So then I thought, well, maybe I need to think about this different. In efforts to salvage the video, I decided, well, on one extreme, if 32 thousandths is too much, what happens if I go down lower, lower than 28 thousandths? So I decided to go to 25 thousandths gap and see what the car runs because, hey, maybe even 28 is too much and I just can't feel it. Maybe I will gain a little bit more power back by gapping down to 25 thousandths. So that's what I did. Let the car cool down, regapped them, went out, did another 40 to 80 run, same stretch of road, everything. It was a little bit hotter out at this point in time, but I tried to mitigate that variable by, uh, you know, cooling down the intercooler with the hose and the fan on the engine. So the car was not really heat soaked between runs. It was pretty consistent. With that said, the run with the plugs at 25 thousandths was 4.19. So over a tenth 
slower. You know, you could say, well, that was due to the DA being 200 feet higher and the temperature being five degrees warmer, maybe. But like I said, I tried to mitigate that with cooling the car down before the run. So for the sake of this video, we're going to say that that one tenth of a difference, over a tenth of a difference, is due to the smaller spark plug gap, which is really interesting. And if you look at the accelerometer between both runs, you can see how different the car acted between both runs. You can see on the first run how there's less oscillation in the accelerometer um, and there are higher peaks um, in force, which you can definitely feel. Uh, the car definitely felt stronger, uh, more torque with the plugs at 28,000s. And it seems more consistent, where if you go in the run where I got to at 25, the oscillations were a lot higher. And overall, the acceleration was less. So at the end of the day, this video doesn't seem to have proven much of anything. And if anything, this video has just continued to illustrate the importance of proper spark plug gap on your vehicle. Maybe, maybe if I adjusted the dwell time in the tune, then I can get all of what I need out of these coils to run a larger gap but I don't wanna risk doing that. I'm not installing a separate coil driver, although I do have a coil driver. I'm not putting it in this car. It's not what it was for, it's not where it's going. This is a daily driver. I want to use the factory ignition setup. So not being able to drive these coils any harder than how they currently are with factory settings, they're pretty much useless at creating a hot enough spark to make a bigger, gap in the spark plug. Like I said, that's definitely a bummer. I really thought I could get away with a higher gap. And like I said, maybe I could squeeze in 30 thousandths, maybe 29, I don't know. At 26 PSI, I probably could get away with 29, but I doubt that there really would be any noticeable difference. There was a difference, it seemed going too low, but that was 25 to 28, that was three thousandths of a difference. Going 28 to 29, I don't know if you really see all that much. That's why most tuners, most people kind of stick with 28 thousandths, 26 usually to 30 thousandths is the main spectrum for EcoBoost cars that you will see recommended. There's probably a reason for that, isn't there? Just as I showcased in this video, Buster's engine seems to like 28 thousandths the best. If I was running close to 30 PSI, which I'm not doing yet, but sometime in the future I will be, 28 thousandths may actually be too much, or maybe it'll be just right. Only time will tell when that comes around, but until then, as Buster sits with the current configuration, with the current ignition setup, the current tune, the current spark plugs, 28 thousandths is where the car is the happiest, it's where it's making peak cylinder pressure, which is making the most torque, and making the car accelerate the fastest. So with all of that out of the way, I guess just let me know what you think about all of this and put your thoughts in the comments. Otherwise, I think it's gonna wrap it up here for this video. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with everyone you know if you wanna see more content like this, and you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Keep a look out for the next Cars Creative video.